Hello everyone, my name is Magnus Brede Birkenes and I represent the Norwegian uh, Language Bank at the National Library of Norway together with my colleague Andre Kåsen who prepared this paper together with me. We are going to talk about a project um, involving crawling of uh, Norwegian public sector state internet domains um, and we're going to talk about our approach um, um, the motivation for for the project and uh, a bit about the Sami resources found within um, our crawl. Our web crawling project um, started as a cooperation between the National Library of Norway and the language and the, and the Language Council uh, of Norway. Uh, the task was to map the usage of Norwegian bokmål and nynorsk um, in material, information material, from Norwegian state institutions. As some of you may know, there are two official forms of Norwegian, and Norwegian state uh, entities are required by law to produce information uh, material in both variants, and no variant can be represented by less than 25% uh, of the material. Um, the, deg the degree of representation uh, is monitored by the Norwegian Language Council and since last year uh, the National Library of Norway provides data, uh, the data for, for this survey. Um, and uh, this, was the this was the motivation for, for the crawl. We crawl Norwegian state entities in order to give um, data to the Language Council of Norway. But we can also use this data for other purposes. and. Uh, um, since then, we have um, also uh, created a, a cooperation project project with the Norwegian Digitization Agency to map the usage of Sami Sami languages on uh, Norwegian web domains or state web domains. The tool we use uh, for this crawling is a very simple one, and it's uh, found on virtually every Linux system out there. Uh, and you might know it, it's called VGET. What we do is a focused, so-called focused crawling, um, in that we uh, download material uh, extensively from um, a list of um, specified domains and ignore information from other domains linked from these domains. So it's a, it, it's a special kind of, of crawling. We do recursive download to level 12, which was the deepest, deepest level we found uh, in the pilot study. Um, and we have to set this limit due to the possibility of infinite loops, which is a problem in crawling. We only crawl textual documents. We are only inter interested in text. Um, and um, to that end, we uh, limit uh, the um, MIME types or filter by MIME types. So we are only interested in HTML documents, PDF documents, and um, Word and LibreOffice documents, document formats. We crawl all state web domains with some exceptions, like uh, web pages um, used for um, internal purposes, for example. We crawl all the subdomains of the state domains and uh, all the pages, but we, uh, or all the web pages, but we uh, do have some uh, exceptions. We are not interested in metadata rep repositories, for example. And finally, we store uh, the crawls in work, the work format, the web archive uh, standardized uh, format. It looks like this. Um, it's basically a sequence of requests and responses. So here we see the response from the landing page of the Norwegian State Educational Fund, Lånekassen. And um, we get some basic metadata, for example, the crawling date, the target URI, for example, and then the response itself. Um, down at the bottom here, we see the, the HTML response. But we also get, for example, a checksum of the payload um, found here, the, the work payload digest. And by comparing, by doing a subsequent crawl of Lånekassen or, or this domain and comparing the checksums, we can uh, find new material uh, in a subsequent crawl. So that's quite handy. We do some um, processing of the material. For, for the HTML pages, we do so-called boilerplate removal with a software called uh, Ustext. 
and use text um, looks at navigation or excludes navigation menus, menus repetitive elements, um, and for example, link lists. And the method uh, it uses is the, it looks at the semantics of HTML documents uh, or elements. Um, so for example, nav elements are automatically <laughs> excluded. And within, for example, div or p uh, elements, paragraph elements, it looks at the so-called stop word dent density. So um, the density of functional words uh, in a language like and or uh, I, uh, or lots of pronouns, articles, um, conjunctions, conjunctions, and so on, to find uh, to look at language uh, or to find language structure in the in the texts. Um, for the PDF documents, we do a full uh, optical character recognition (OCR) using the Google Cloud Vision API, and um, the Google Cloud Vision API is good for uh, it does a reasonable uh, OCR and it's very fast to to do it in the cloud. So we have uh, for the first crawl we had to to OCR 500,000 documents, which is quite a lot, um, and it does that at a re at a reasonable speed. For the Word and uh, Open Document uh, formats, we used a Python library called Textract, which basically is a wrapper around other tools like AntiWord, if you know that one, for, for, for old Word documents. And it does, does some XML parsing for, for the modern uh, formats. Um, we do a, D, a full deduplication of all documents on domain level. So we look at the checksum of the text after text uh, extraction, and uh, in this way we we deduplicate the the, the, the documents. Let's uh, first look at an example of boilerplate removal. So this is the um, the homepage of Banenur, um, which is um, the Norwegian railway infrastructure uh, company, and the about page uh, of this um, company. And we are interested in only in the in this text in the center here, and we want to exclude the headers, uh, the navigation menus, for example. And um, as I said, we use the we use the software uh, use text in order to get this uh, center text here or the non boilerplate text. And um, use text looks at the density of stop words. So, for example. Uh, here in the second paragraph of this text here in the in the middle, we have a total of 80 and uh, 18 words, and of these words, six words are stop words or functional words. Words they're underlined here. We see here, for example, ad or is to um, in Norwegian for you know that from English as well preposition. Um, so these are functional words and give uh, indicate that some kind of, well, language structure is found here. It's not only a, a, a list of, uh, of entities or uh, their numbers. Um, it gives an, a basic indication that we have a, have a sentence here. And six out of 18 words are stop words, so we get a, 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 a ratio of a, 33, a density of 33%. And use text, uh, uses uh, the thirty percent as a threshold. We have no links um, in these paragraphs, so link density is not uh, interesting here. But by using stop word density, we get the the text that we want. Here we see um, the output from the Google Cloud Vision API, which in this case is uh, HOC HOCR uh, XML. And um, here we can simply extract the paragraphs that we're interested in from the, from the PDF document. After having applied this pipeline, um, we do language detection. So we have models for uh, Norwegian Bukmol, Nynorsk, uh, Northern Sami, Lule Sami, Southern Sami, and other languages compiled at the University of Tromsø, uh, Gela Techno. And um, the method we use, or what, what we look at, um, is the frequency of or rankings of character engrams, that is, sequences of characters and, uh, and words, tokens. Um, 
the algorithm used is the so-called out of place rank order. So it compiles uh, frequency lists of character engrams or characters, um, and then look at the uh, differences in ranking between the uh, document itself and, and the model. We use the implementation TextCat, and um, we do uh, this classification on both the document and the paragraph level. Here is an example of uh, language detection at the paragraph level. So this is a, uh, a PDF document, the same that we looked at uh, uh, some slides ago. And um, what we do uh, exclude, um, we do exclude very short paragraphs. Language detection on very short texts um, is a problem. So we uh, do not uh, detect language on uh, paragraphs uh, smaller than 10, uh, 10 words. And we see here that um, the paragraphs lo that are longer than 10 words um, are all in uh, Norwegian bookmark. And we get the, the token count uh, in the rightmost column here. So by doing this, we end up with a fairly large uh, corpus, 4.3 billion uh, tokens or running words. Uh, after the duplication, that's important to say. So a corpus is a is a text collection, uh, um, basically. For and not surprisingly, the largest part is made up by text in Norwegian bookmål, three point two billion, and um, after that we have um, quite a few English texts. Nynorsk uh, has a fairly fairly small percentage, a bit more than five percent, and then. Uh, Interestingly, um, we also find um, some Sami texts. So for Northern Sami, we have uh, 5.7 5 million uh, running words, tokens. And for the two uh, other two, Southern Sami and Lule Sami, um, they're somewhat less. So uh, 400 and 200,000 tokens, respectively. This is a fairly large uh, resource or corpus for both uh, Norwegian and Sami, um, possibly one of the largest free uh, text resources. Um, if you compare the Norwegian part with uh, with Common Crawl, which um, which is a very large scale uh, crawling project, um, we find that um, in the in Common Crawl, in the Oscar release of Common Crawl with un unshuffled sentences. Um, 804 million, we have 804 million uh, tokens for Bookmall, which is um, about uh, one fourth of the size in, in this corpus, in our corpus. And for Nynorsk, uh, it's even less. So it's only 10 million tokens there, whereas we have nearly uh, 300 million. Um, I also uh, compiled some numbers for Wikipedia, um, so I just downloaded uh, some recent dumps for Norwegian Bookmål, Norwegian Nynorsk and Northern Sami from the beginning of June and uh, tokenized it and uh, that is segmented it into words and then counted the, the, the words in order to get a count of how large the material is. And for Bookmål I found that uh, the Norwegian part of Wikipedia um, is made up by 115 million uh, tokens. Nynorsk around 30 million and Northern Sami 650,000, so this corpus is um, uh, a bit less than 10 times the size of the Sami, no, no, the Northern Sami uh, Wikipedia. So that makes, makes it an interesting uh, resource definitely for Northern Sami or uh, um, possibly. So let's look at the Northern Sami material which is the largest and um, when grouping it by the the various domains we have here uh, a chart um, of all the domains and uh, the circles are scaled after the amount of tokens for that domain so we see that regeringen uh, no uh, that that is the Norwegian government the website of the Norwegian government uh, is the largest largest part for northern Sami so it's uh, 3.6 million tokens. And then we have the Sami Högskole, uh, the, uh, the Sami uh, State College. And um, UDIR, uh, the Norwegian 
Directorate for Education and Training. Uh, is also a, a significant part, 242,000 tokens. When looking at southern Sami, we see that the government is still, uh, we have some less domains, uh, totally, and some, of course, also, uh, it's, a, it's a much, much smaller corpus. But the Norwegian government is still uh, one of the biggest domains uh, about, but, but uh, in this case, the um, Directorate for uh, Education and Training we did uh, is a bit bigger even than the government. And then we have the Fylkesmannen, which is now actually called Statsforvalteren, which is the, uh, or who is the county governor. Um, that's also uh, the, that's the third most important domain in the southern Sami material. For Lule Sami, um, Udir and Regeringen.no uh, are also the two most uh, important domains and then follows the Norwegian Research Council. So the Norwegian, so looking at these three languages together, comparing it, we see that uh, regeringen.no and udir are probably the most important or interesting domains. And we see that, we notice that udir is about the same size, uh, about the same size in all three of them. So 110,000 tokens here, 154 here, and well, it's a bit bigger here, 242,000. And that could perhaps indicate that we find uh, that we will find some parallel resources here, uh, that is um, the same text um, in several languages. So I compiled lists of uh, URLs for uh, udir.no and sorted them uh, by, uh, uh, sorted them alphabetically and we notice here groups uh, of, well, parallel texts um, in the three different languages. So easily, by, only by looking at the URL similarity, we can do what we call document alignment. There are also various other methods of doing um, document alignment, looking at the distribution of words, for example, but here uh, only looking at the links gives us gives us, an, let's say, say, an automatic uh, alignment. What can we use this material for? Obviously, data mining, and the more data, the better, the freer, the better, and this corpus is potentially very free. Um, we can use it for statistical machine translation, um, other uh, research within uh, natural language processing and digital humanities, to name uh, some areas. There are, of course, also challenges with this material. So, uh, for example, we are not the owner, owner of these documents, we just downloaded them, so the license situation um, is somewhat unclear. And uh, there might be sensitive materials among the downloaded files, files put up on the web uh, that shouldn't be there in the first part. And uh, at least that were there at the point of time when, uh, of crawling. Um, so one possible solution to these two problems uh, could be to put the data behind an API um, where the underlying database can be changed upon request and people uh, can be notified, for example, uh, when uh, they have downloaded material containing uh, license or uh, privacy uh, infringements, infringements. If you're interested in this material, in the Sami material, uh, or in other parts of this corpus, you are more than welcome to, con to contact us uh, at the National Library and the Norwegian Language Bank, and uh, we will reach out to you.